Welcome to Business Sense, Rappler's new business show where we talk to the country's CEOs, company presidents, and top executives. I'm your host, Ralph Rivas. Here, we get to know them a little better, their leadership styles, business outlook, and even their favorite books and movies. For our very first episode, we deep dive into the car industry with Lisette Laos Velasco, CEO and chair of the Laos Group of Companies. Laos Group of Companies is, of course, the largest brand, multi-brand network in the Philippines today, highly diversified, and uh, we, of course, know them for the brands like Mitsubishi, Ford, Hyundai, Nissan, Suzuki, uh, Kia, no, lots of that, lots of that, lots and lots of cars. So um, welcome, Miss Lisette. Thanks for joining us to the show. Hi, Ralph. It, it's nice to be here. Hi, so uh, how's business? Kumusta? Well, you know, we're, we're still coping up and, uh, and trying to survive this pandemic. We know a lot of industries, not just the automotive industries, has suffered a lot from, from uh, this pandemic. It's not just here in the Philippines, but all over the world. So uh, the same as the other business owners, we are trying our best uh, to be able to, to survive this. Yeah, so uh, can you elaborate more on the impact of the pandemic in the auto industry? Uh, Nag-bounce back na ba or uh, struggle pa rin? Yeah, I, I think you, you all know and it's all over the news that one of the industries that are really impacted in this pandemic is the automotive industry, right? Um, and uh, it, it's because numbers have really gone down uh, and we've we've not been back to our pre-pandemic uh numbers yet but of course it's it's really a factor of uh not just a pandemic but also other other things uh like uh the lockdowns you know the restrictions that are happening all over all over the philippines and uh, as well as uh i i think you see it on the news that there's also a shortage of chips globally and th therefore that also affects the production of our uh manufacturers and uh, I, I think the effect is also worldwide so so yeah, including our you know our uh, regulations and what have you. So it, it has it has so much impact. The automotive has been in, impacted by so many uh, uh, outside forces. Yeah. Well, uh, based on the current numbers that you're seeing and the the trends, uh, when do we see the pre-pandemic levels at the very least? Meron na ba kayong outlook Ooh. on that? Uh, na, not in not by this year, but. Um, we are looking at if the numbers are the same way as they have been for the past six months, uh, we are seeing that the automotive industry probably will end um, around 10% higher than what it was last year, but still below the pre-pandemic levels, which is the 2019. So, uh, wow, just 10%? Just, just 10% yeah, higher than last year? Yeah, the way that the numbers are going, if I, I said if and when the numbers will be the way they are. So uh, I am looking at uh, the average number of sales for the past six months. And if we continue the same number, that's that's how it, we will end by the end of the year. So hopefully we do a lot, lot better, but I guess it is what it is. Yeah, so um, I guess uh, lots of companies are banking on the vaccination program, definitely, right? So um, yes. let's let's assume that uh, the adult population, majority of the adult population would uh, be vaccinated sometime next year. Do you expect uh, revenge shopping? Will will the will the car industry benefit from that? You know, I think I've I think uh, for the revenge shopping, uh, I see that some are are happening right now. Not not probably in the automotive industry, but elsewhere because. Maybe it's not revenge shopping, but probably they are just moving their their spending elsewhere, right? When when things are, are have been good with traveling and people have traveled a lot and spent a lot of on travel, now all of a sudden it has been more than a year we have not traveled uh, outside the country, and so people may may have to find ways to to use uh, their hard earned money. Mm. So you also mentioned chips. Gano ba kalaking struggle yun uh, uh, for, for the industry? Uh, can you, you know elaborate? The, yeah, you know, the truth of the matter is that uh, uh, we, we know that everything, you know, moved to the, to the, to the net uh, online. Um, and the demand now, as far as uh, technology is concerned, like uh, computers and what have you, I'm sure there was a big surge 
of demand as far as uh, uh, our our um, computers, mobiles, mobiles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? And and uh, you know that uh, globally, the pandemic has also crippled the production and and you know hampered and actually slowed down production. So. So I guess the supply uh, is not able to catch up with the demand globally. So that hurts also the automotive industry because uh, some of the vehicles uh, that that we are offering are, are already ha are have computers in it. So so yeah, it it hampers also the production side of the automotive industry. So that's an interesting angle. Uh, our demand for computers, you know, the mobile going going digital. Um, you know the other industries are also parang nagagawa ng, uh, ng ng mga parts, right? That's true. Mm. So um, I want to talk about consumer behavior. Have there been changes, or uh, is there a preference change? Uh, may may mas preferred na bang sasakyan ngayon uh, compared to the others, uh, even before uh, before the pandemic and now? Changes, observations. Okay, some of the observations we've seen in the automotive industry, actually, I think in our case, no, I, I just probably can speak for our, on our end, is that a lot of our consumers now have have inquired uh, online, and they've they've now started to embrace online inquiries, um, and then checking out the vehicles online uh, because we have to really follow uh, proper health protocols, and it's it's really difficult for for people to really visit at. Uh, us in our dealerships. Um, I, I guess that's where uh, the, the behavior has changed. But the good news is that uh, the, the technology has enabled our consumers to be more knowledgeable about uh, the vehicles, about uh, the, the offerings, the products. So it's a lot easier for them coming to, to us. Uh, more or less, they already have a background on what they are looking for. So it's just a matter of us having them see it, feel it, and touch it. And and I guess uh, uh, I think moving forward, um, you know, a lot of people have changed to online na, and uh, I think it will continue the same way. Dati talaga, they they really flock our showrooms. Now it's different. We uh, we actually communicate online by a phone and then uh, comes the delivery uh, they're ready to be delivered to to our customers uh, na kaagad, no so uh, pa paano yun uh, ano yung typical na arrangement uh, they see it uh, they view the cars online and then they go there one time and then they buy it na or uh, uh, what's what's ano bang ano bang changes and uh, kasi ako personally kapag sasakyan talagang pupuntahan mo yun di ba parang para sa akin parang it's not enough to see it on 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 social media right yeah but i i guess you know uh we have to to to, to um actually adjust to the changing times and and probably our consumers also felt the same way it's it's the same way that in in my case whenever i i really wanted something online i before if i had to you know touch feel see a, a certain item i have have to go to the store itself but right now you know i i guess i've learned to uh to buy stuff online so probably it's the same way for for the automotive industry uh of course there will still be people who who prefer to to see the vehicle but for some i think uh, our customers are very much knowledgeable at, uh, of the vehicles they really wanted to purchase so so they come in knowing what they they really want. Yeah. So um, any particular models na mas in demand ngayon? Um, are consumers uh, buying bigger cars or or you have a parang same lang? Uh, it's the same. You know, it it really depends on the location. Uh, regardless of what uh, uh, what type of vehicle. Like for example, in our case, uh, let let me just talk about Ford here and. Uh, you know our pickups have been quite in demand, uh, and uh, you know uh, people really like the sportiness and and the look of uh, our Ford pickup trucks. And yeah, and and it really depends, no, uh, from place to place. Um, I, I guess the demand also depends on the the type of terrain and uh, where the individual is and for what use. So. 
really there was no shift, but a lot of it really is on the SUV pickup side uh, rather than the um, four-wheel cars uh, or the uh, passenger cars. What about the high-end market, the luxury cars? Any observations? Never changed. It, in fact, they've, uh, they've been doing pretty well. Mm. So uh, if you're going to compare per segment, ano yung pinaka-resilient? We know the commercial vehicle segment has been uh, quite in demand nowadays. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of purchases, fleet purchases, uh, as well as uh, actually are, are being used and are being utilized at the moment. So we do have a lot of pickups, SUVs that are being purchased uh, at this time compared to the uh, as I've, I've mentioned, the car segment. You know? So really SUV and pickups, uh, commercial vehicles as well. Trucks, well, buses. Your thoughts on green cars. Um, is, it, is it here, uh, way out in the future, or uh, what, what will, what will uh, drive that, uh, that growth in that segment? You know, I, I think the green cars are, 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 have been there for quite some time. I, at, I think it is really up to us to embrace it and, and to prepare for it. And uh, I don't see it too far away, uh, but I still feel that uh, vehicles that are running on petrol will, will still remain. And uh, there probably will be a niche, niche market for the, for the green cars. Uh, parang hindi agad-agad no mag adapt but it's really up to us it's it's there's some brands that are already offering it okay here's a question from facebook from molly galindo uh, do you think the adaptations you made during the pandemic will be here to stay given how convenient they are so ano ba yeah. adaptation uh, mm. i i think probably the way we do business or the how we do things, probably, you know. I mean, that's how I understood the question. Um, yeah, I, I feel that even even our interviews like this, right? I, I see it will be a mix of there will be a live interview and there will be an online interview. Don't you see it's efficient, right? I mean, uh, I think this pandemic has given us an opportunity to find ways to be more efficient and how to make uh, full use of our time. We know how difficult it is to travel from place to place, but uh, with a click of a button, we can be in two different uh, places in just a span of five minutes, one minute, or even a second. So I guess the same way for the automotive industry, um, other than the way we do sell the vehicles uh, on site, uh, um, in market marketing areas, in, in malls, etc. I think it will be a combination of that plus the ones that we do on uh, on FB Live as well. So I, I think both uh, will will stay the same. It, it'll be it will be uh, a combination of both live and and online. Yeah. Mm. Actually, we have two hundred seventy viewers around around that now. So uh, thanks for watching the very first episode of Business Sense. Now. Uh, Ms. Lisette is also uh, recognized as uh, one of the six honorees of the 2021 Salute to Dealers Awards. It's a, it's a worldwide recognition, right? And uh, it's awarded by the global automotive, automotive company, uh, Ford Motor Company. And uh, Ms. Lisette is the only woman this year to be given this recognition. So congratulations. And the second Filipino overall to receive this honor. So... Um, Ms. Lisette, um, are you perks? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so Ralph, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, truth, truth of the matter is uh, the award was an, ex an unexpected award. Um, we have been uh, doing a lot of uh, community activities ever since, and uh, you know, we, we we're just there to, to help, we are just there to help the community, and yet, uh, somebody and you know uh recognize our efforts and and decided to include us in the uh in the nominees for for the year and so uh yeah and and so we're we're glad and we're very happy to have accepted it and received it and and what is more surprising is um is the donation that they will be giving ford motor companies giving uh 
to to me uh, so that we can uh, choose a charity that we would like to support and help. And I'm I'm really really excited uh, for that. And uh, I am working with uh, PBSP on the programs that uh, we will be using the donation from for. Then, of course, one of the metrics for that award is, of course, uh, your leadership style. So uh, tell us more about that. Um, are you strict? Are you afraid? 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 I've had a chance to lead an organization where I, I work with peers, so therefore my leadership style is different in that sense. Um, I've worked, of course, our, our company. I've, uh, you know, depending on the situation as well. Uh, I, I guess it's more. I, I adopt the situation. I, unfortunately, I do not believe in one, one size fits all. So I, I, I guess I, I change style where it's needed. What's your biggest struggle this pandemic? Nitong, ano, uh, in, in doing business overall? Really, the biggest struggle is really not being able to see fee people face to face. I think that's the biggest struggle. Other than that, you know, as Filipinos, we are very resilient. And, and I guess that's the reason why uh, we just have to make do with what we have and wh what we are presented. So, so I, I, I guess... Um, the pandemic has also helped us in in a way uh, to uh, to fix to prepare the organization and everything else. So it's really the human interaction. I guess that's the biggest struggle up until now. Yeah. I, I'm I'm struggling with that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the baton for the Laos group of companies has been passed on to you. Uh, just in um, 2019, because of the untimely death of Mr. Levy Laos. So, um, um, any anything that you can share? Um, uh, lessons from him? Uh, of course, this is a family business. Um, there are definitely struggles in that uh, arrangement. Um, can you share us a little more, a little about your uh, what you've learned from him? Um, you know, I I'm quite lucky because I do have uh, a very uh, strong mother who who uh, who has supported us um, in, including my siblings who have been you know we have been working together to make sure that the legacy of our father stays on um, it, it it was a uh, it was a it, it was not an easy uh, transition but rather i think by working together as a family we are able to hurdle the the most difficult one uh, uh which was in 2019 and and so right now um you know we we, we are still a work in progress and um what actually is um we've learned from this is that because our, our dad always reminds us you know uh to always count our blessings, no matter what the situation, no matter how you're feeling, what you're going through. Uh, some people may have a, a more uh, difficult uh, situation than you are. So I guess it's really that thing that, uh, you know, that, that kept us together uh, as a family and say, you know, let's just count our blessings. And, and it is what it is. There are things that we can control. There are things that we cannot control. And we just have to live with that. Did you imagine yourself um, taking up this role? <laughs> not, not that sudden. <laughs> not that sudden. Uh, I, I think naman my dad was a planner and, and he has been uh, planning each and every family member in the business, right? And, but unfortunately, it's the, it's the change uh, in a span of, what, hours, right? It's, it's that change that was really unexpected uh and uh and yeah uh and did you know that that day was uh our meeting with ford and uh i was so i mean i was with him in the morning and all of a sudden in the afternoon learned about the 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 situation and yeah and things change since then and mm -hmm. we had to adapt to the situation now uh how is it like to lead uh 
uh, one of you're definitely one of the leaders now in the auto industry in the country, right? So um, how does it feel to be in that industry, a very male-dominated industry at that? It's it's fun. It's exciting. I I really like the 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 excitement. The I don't know that the the automotive industry has. Uh, you know, whenever they release a new uh, vehicle, whenever there are things that I mean, it's really exciting to be in this industry for some reason. Um, you're right; it's a male-dominated industry, but I don't see any reason why a woman cannot. Uh, take on the lead. I've, I've lived and actually I grew up with with my older brother Paul, and I'm used to working with with uh, with a, a male. So I mean, I, I guess I don't think uh, there was really a big uh, adjustment, and and I'm quite happy to be to be in this industry actually. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, Mr. Laos has been a. Uh, uh, labeled as a uh, so-called uh, countryside Taipan, right? Yes. So uh, he really uh, helped develop uh, the business uh, outside of Manila. So um, what do you think is the key to success in uh, establishing a business outside the capital? Ah, it has both its challenges and uh, its advantage. You know, the good news about it is that, uh, uh, you know, my dad was very deliberate in making sure that uh, the countryside is developed. And it seemed, I, and I think he has proven us right about it, you know, and as you see right now, the pandemic and, uh, you know, the pandemic has hit the, the epicenter of the pandemic was in, in, in NCR and Metro Manila. Imagine if there were no, uh, there was no development outside Metro Manila, what would have been, uh, how, how would our country look like right now? But because there were there are businessmen outside Metro Manila who are trying to build uh, their communities on their own, I guess also help during this time. So and yeah, and and I think it, it it's actually a great move, and and we support uh, and and we try to uh, to continue on his legacy on developing the countryside. That's the reason why we're here, and we continue to to build on. Uh, the community where we are. Hmm. Okay, let me circle back to uh, to cars. Because uh, we have another question here. Um, ano do yung pinaka in demand lately for the for the middle class segment? The types of models. Well, again, you know, it really depends on where you're gonna use it. Uh, I mean, there's so many factors in in buying a car the same way as factors in in buying your computer, right? So I, I think it really depends. So if, if you're just uh, if you're just in Metro Manila and just traveling, house, office, I mean, a a, 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 a personal car will already do a a four door or or a, a small SUV will also do. Uh, if you wanted to, if you have more budget, then go mid-size to bigger SUVs. But for some reason, the pickup segment has been very much in demand to both uh, male and female. Uh, maybe they like the look. What What's with the pickups? Probably they like the look, right? I I think it's really how they look like. Uh, they 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 look they look strong. They look macho they look i don't know um i think it really depends eh, uh, on the use because uh, i i prefer suvs and what have you because you know uh bringing stuff and it's very convenient to bring stuff around uh, in an suv but some people find naman, uh, the pickups to be versatile and you know they can go anywhere with it uh what's your outlook for the puv segment naman um will 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 it uh, bounce back sooner than the others? Pero kasi merong ano di ba? Uh, may restrictions pa rin. Like one seat apart, you know, kailangan may, may ano pa rin, uh, physical boundaries. So yes. how's that gonna affect uh, sales on that segment? You know, I think we just have to live with it and we have to support our government uh, in, in those undertakings because really what we are focusing right now is making sure that uh, the virus doesn't spread further 
so that uh, we can have a better Christmas. Diba? That's that's probably the reason why uh, we are trying our best to to follow uh, all the protocols, safety protocols uh, in, in the country. So I, I think we just have to, to live with it at, at the moment. Um, and I, I think what's more important is for all of us to survive this. Mm -hmm. So um, going back, uh, Laos Group, uh, what's your... Uh, What's the ideal, most ideal scenario for this year? Of course, the ideal scenario will always be go back to pre-pandemic times, right? But I, mm -hmm. again, as I've mentioned, count your blessings for as long as we know that we are able to serve our customers, for as long as they know that we are here uh, to make sure that our uh, our uh, dealerships and, and all our uh, areas are, you know, are... Um, uh, they, they follow protocols, safety protocols of the IATF and of the government for as long as it's safe for everybody to visit our uh, facilities. And I, I think uh, that's the more important thing. And, and hopefully we bounce back in 2022. So what's the strategy? Uh, new products or you still maintain what you currently have or, or what, you currently what you offered before the pandemic? Um, what's, what's the strategy in... Uh, in meeting uh, ano bang supply demand ngayon? Uh, you know I think what what is good about the automotive industry is even be, because even with the pandemic and even with a uh, with a shortage of certain uh, vehicles and models uh, they've not stopped uh, providing uh, uh, really good and, and actually introducing uh, really nice products you know? and and I think they will continue to do so because I guess at the end of the day they are here to to provide mobility to all our, you know, kap uh, mga taga, uh, mga kababayans, no? So I, I guess uh, still look forward to new products and exciting models that that are coming your way. I know a lot of uh, industries, a lot of brands are are working on that. Yeah, I understand. Definitely, the pandemic is uh, quite a struggle, right? And uh, vaccination is still yung hinihintay ng lahat. So um, other than the pandemic, what's the biggest risk that you're looking at? Uh, ano yung pinaka, sa tingin mo, pinaka struggle ngayon in the, in the auto industry that, uh, that uh, government needs, needs to look into more? You know, we, as I mentioned, right, uh, I, I guess it's, it's understanding how we can uh, support our, our customers with vehicles, no, we again, as I've mentioned, we uh, a lot of us, uh, a lot of the brands, some of the brands may have some shortage because of a uh, global shortage as well. Uh, but I guess hopefully that the government has uh, to continue to support us as a as an industry, and we are seeing that anyway. So, uh, kaya nga importante lang talaga sa amin to survive it, so that we also keep our employees. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's a ripple effect. Uh, if we are able to keep our employees, we they keep their livelihood and and they they support their families. At the end of the day, uh, it will also help the economy move forward uh, as as people spend. Okay, here in business sense, uh, it's not all just about business. We also want to get to know you, since um, this is your first live interview for this year, right? So, yes. uh, um, I know how. How's life? Uh, anong, anong pinagkakaabalahan? Um, how do you keep busy on your day off? Uh, what do you do uh, to uh, survive this pandemic? Just to, you know, just to, just to survive this pandemic. <laughs> I don't know whether you can call it day off or not. I really probably do not have any and I'm used to it. Uh, because, you know, I, I, we really work. Our, our dealerships are open Mondays to Saturdays. And... Uh, but of course, uh, I, I cannot survive uh, if I only work that way. Uh, of course, I also have other organizations that I am associated with and I have been very busy with um, learning during the pandemic um, and um, yeah, and, and trying to, to keep myself busy personally, uh, not really able to socialize uh, yet at the moment because unfortunately, um, we we want to ensure that our safety uh, uh, from the virus is 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 actually we, we are protected from it. So uh, yeah, I I don't know because the weekends are for family. So 
I don't see any day off there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you, you mentioned earlier uh, you still have uh, several organizations that keep you busy, right? So uh, could you briefly talk to, uh, talk to me about that? Oh yeah, so I, I think you know I, I'm also part of a non uh, um, nonprofit organization called the Entrepreneurs Organization. It's it's a group of entrepreneurs here in the Philippines, and you know every now and then we come up with programs and learning uh, uh, events, you know, to help uh, help uh, us through this and learn even if we are all on lockdown. So um, we've we've done so many things. We have also done a lot of CSR activities. Um, as well. So, yeah, uh, those are the other things that I do. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and, another th and other things. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ms. Lisette, uh, final words. Anything that you'd like to share to us? Ah, wow. Uh, final words. You know, really, uh, it, the, we know that everybody is, is struggling right now. And the only way to do things is really to take everything one day at a time. I, I would always remember um, and, and I would always tell people about, you know, just take it one day at a time because truly so many things uh, happening around us overwhelms us. But if we take it one day at a time, I think we can break them down into smaller pieces that may not overwhelm us and we are able to, uh, to deal with them better. Uh, in fact, you know, I mean, maybe uh, just a short, uh, 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 you know, message like uh, this one. I've actually learned uh, the book uh, I learned from Francis Kong. He had the book that he gave me a long time ago. Uh, it's called One, uh, you know, One Day at a Time. And, and, and I've, I've been reading that every now and then uh, to keep me prepared for the day um, as I do my, you know, daily... Uh, journaling in the morning and and my habit of making sure that i i start my day right so um yeah so i've, I've learned that just take it one day at a time we cannot be we, we cannot be superman or superwoman we cannot do everything yeah of course and with that thank you so much lisette laos velasco ceo of the laos group of companies and that has been our very first episode of business sense now keep it right here Actually, uh, we'll try to do it as often as uh, I can. Kung sino ang gusto mo interview I'll accommodate it. But for the next episode, uh, it's a very exciting episode like this one. Uh, we have executives from the PhilInvest REIT and we'll, of course, discuss about their uh, REIT offering. So keep it right here on Business Sense. Thanks for watching.